Hi, it's Dr. Ogden. In this lecture, we're going to be looking at human evolution, one of my favorite subjects. So in a recent poll, 57% um, of those that were polled said that humans and other, things, other living things have evolved over time. But there's still a large proportion of people who don't agree with the, eye of with the idea of evolution. And if you just take all of the DNA, we basically share about a 98.5% of our DNA with chimpanzees. And even um, some, more, some of the newer genomic data that's coming out, this, this is even a little out, out of date here, but basically if you look at the entire genomes of all of these organisms, it strongly supports the, the close sister relationship of humans and chimpanzees. So humans and chimpanzees are each other's closest relative on the great tree of life. And we probably branched off maybe between four to six, maybe even four to seven million years ago. And there's, since, that, since uh, we've started learning about these different hominid species, there's been a plethora of these species that have been described and discovered. And this is a graph just showing some of these. And in the lecture today, I'm going to quickly just go through a few of these species so that we can get an idea for the transitionary, uh, the major transitions that were taking place from that time when, there were, when we had a common ancestor with chimpanzees until we evolve into modern Homo sapiens. Now it's important to know that all of the original fossil finds, everything that, is, um, that came before the genus Homo evolved, all of those species um, are in Africa. And these are some of the fossil sites for some of these species. The oldest species that we have is called Sahelanthropus chadensis. Uh, this was found in Chad, and it is a very old specimen, and um, there, all we have is this one skull, right? Around that same time, maybe a little bit earlier, was Aruban tugenensis, where we have some fragmentary bones as well. And then you come to it, it then there's a, a gap in our knowledge for a couple uh, million years, and then we get into the, where the fossil record becomes very um, plentiful. And this starts with the species Artip Artipithecus ramidus in the genus Artipithecus. And actually, this specimen right here was a specimen that took 15 years to construct, and it's the oldest, most complete skeleton of a human. We, the nickname for this species is Artie. Um, it's not a chimp. It's not a person. Some of the reconstruction drawings look something like this, uh, potentially what this species looked like. And what's interesting is if you actually look at the bones, of the hand and of the feet, you can see that the digits are actually still curved in their bones, giving evidence, uh, leading evidence to that this is an organism that probably is still spending quite a bit of time in trees. The next main species is Australopithecus afarensis. Um, Australopithecus afarensis and the other species of the genus Australopithecus is a huge group. Many, many dozens of fossils have been found for these species. One of the most famous is this one right here in the middle. This is called Lucy. Na named after the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And this is now an organism that is for sure a bipedal organism. All of the joints between the, the knees and the hips and, and the lower leg all indicate bipedalism. And then even uh, furthermore, there, there were footprints that were found in ash that had been laid down by a recently erupted volcano. So this is basically like left the cement footprints of these hominids, these Australopithecines that were walking through this, this bed right here. And you can even see an adult print next to a, a smaller, like a, a child footprint as they walk through here. And never once do you see a knuckle walk or anything like that. Now I want to mention just a few of these robust Australopithecines. Um, some people classify these as the genus Paranthropus. Um, but it's this lineage that went off, uh, evolution was tinkering and exploring a, a certain type of hominid that had huge, huge jaws, um, a very elevated and pronounced mid-sagittal crest for muscle insur insertion. So they had these huge cheekbones where the muscles came down through and connected onto the, the large mandible. And these were um, organisms that were, that were eating you know, like tubers and other types of really, really uh, chewy, chewy foods. And so they were efficient chewers. In fact, this species right here, Australopithecus boisei, is uh, nicknamed the Nutcracker Man. And here's the last species of these, Australopithecus robustus. So this, this lineage of evolution was kind of a dead end in evolution, but they were very successful. I mean, living for more than a million years. But then they uh, eventually all go extinct, and it becomes a dead end in evolution. So this is where we're at. 
we have the very old fossils, a gap in our knowledge. Then we have the Ardipithecus species. We have the Australopithecus species with the robust Australopithecines or the Paranthropus group over here. And then you have a lineage that leads somewhere into what probably becomes the genus Homo. And the first species in the genus Homo is the species Homo habilis, so called, the so-called handyman. The cranial capacity is starting to increase. Before this, the cranial capacity was pretty much about the same size as chimpanzees. But when we get into the species, into the genus Homo, you'll see this, this gradual, gradual rise in cranial capacity. These uh, organisms lived about 1.9 million years ago to about 1.6 million years ago in Kenya, South Africa, and Ethiopia. Then we get into um, the Homo erectus group, and that sometimes is subdivided into multiple species like Homo rudolfensis, Homo ergaster, which is a middle um, erectus. I mean, look, this is an example of one of the fossil finds that we have for Homo ergaster. I mean, this, if this was hanging in an anatomy lab, you wouldn't really think twice about it. And this is the Nerikotomi boy. Uh, cranial capacity is increasingly getting large. We're up to about 850 cc's now. And then you get to Homo erectus, uh, full Homo erectus. These are the first hominids to leave Africa, so we find species, uh, uh, fossil, fossils of Homo erectus up into Asia, the Middle East, and so forth. And they live from about 1.7 million years ago up to 300 million, but even some of the more modern, homo, even just past Homo erectus, uh, were alive up until maybe 30,000 years ago. Um, and their cranial capacity is getting larger and larger, 900 cc's, and look at how rounded now the mandible is. Not too long ago, in 2003, a new um, hominid species was discovered, and this was Homo floresiensis. Now there was some debate right at the beginning of this discovery that perhaps it was just a human, but just kind of like a, you know, a smaller human with, with a really small head, like a dwarfed human or something. But they continually found more and more specimens. And, and all of them were this really small-bodied form, and so it became a new hominid species, Homo floresiensis. But what's most amazing is that these date to about 18 to 13,000 years ago, so not that long ago. Now, they're called floresiensis because they actually live on a small island over here, the island of Flores and <clears throat> in Indonesia. And, uh, you know, if you come just across over here into Java, there's been lots of Homo erectus, types of fossils that have also been found over here. But Homo floris was apparently somehow made its way on this island, stayed here, and then over over time continually got smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and a really interesting fossil find. Still got a lot, a lot of work to be done on this species, but what, what an amazing fossil find in, in just the last, um, you know, less than, less than 15 years ago. Okay, then we get into the Homo heidelbergensis, which are the archaic Homo sapien groups. Uh, we're now getting basically a cranial capacity about the same size as modern Homo sapiens. And this brings us to Neanderthals. So Neanderthals um, lived in the last ice age. They had very uh, large heads. In fact, they had larger brains on average than Homo sapiens. The largest cranium ever found for a hominid actually comes from a Neanderthal. But they were also very robust and heavy muscled individuals, very barrel chested. Uh, they've been found only in Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. So, and they were, they've um, been around from about 300,000 300, years ago till about 30,000 years ago, maybe even a little bit earlier than that, it seems like. So these red dots all indicate where we have found fossils of Neanderthals. And so you can see this is the estimated geographic range. Not really found down in, in the heart of Africa, maybe you know, a little bit up here on, on the North Rim, but for the most part, European. So this brings us to Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens lived about 100,000 years ago to the present. Now this is modern Homo sapiens. If you really kind of take into the whole Homo sapiens, you probably push that back another 100,000 years or so, because um, we are finding fossils down in South Africa that are 160,000 years ago. And, but it's kind of hard to actually you know, say what's more archaic Homo sapiens and what's modern Homo sapiens. But for sure, by 100,000 years ago, we have kind of the modern Homo sapien form. Uh, the cranial capacity of, has ranged between 1,000 cc's to 1,700 cc's, but right now modern man is about 1,350 on average cc's. So some of the major evolutionary trends that have happened are things like um, a shorter face evolving, right? increased brain size, uh, reduced, reduced jaws, uh, larger anterior teeth and smaller cheek teeth, 
a more rounded and uh, pelvic that is more conducive to larger babies being born and to bipedal bipedalism, the big toe coming forward, you know, from a more rectangular jaw to a much more rounded jaw, the canines being lar be going from large to small with very little space around them, the um, angle of insertion of the legs into the fem into the uh, pelvic area going from outside into a more mid midline increased cranial capacity so the earlier notions of this you know march of man you know monkey becoming is really incorrect I mean I know we see this all of the time that's not how you should think about human evolution human evolution is a tree with evolution exploring in this way and exploring in this way and in many times it's leading to dead ends and perhaps we've only found a subsample of all of the possible hominids that were part of this story um, so it's really a tree with lots of complexities, but we have dozens and dozens of specimens of all of these species except for the, the two really old ones, but the rest of them we have lots of fossil evidence. There's really just no way around it. Homo sapiens evolved from earlier forms of hominids, um, and that's the best explanation for how Homo sapiens came on this planet.